Hello, my friends, and welcome to MSP Unplugged. This is the place to learn tips, tricks, and strategies to help you run your IT service business, whether you're a one-person shop or leading a team for the journey. This is the place for you. My name is Rick Smith, and I am your host. I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, the one and only Chicago's own Prodigy Text Master, Paco LeBron. <laughs> How I know you, you ain't today, talking sir? about me. Uh, I'm doing well, Mr. Smith. As I like to say, better than good, better than most, and even I could say better than I deserve for some that know that old reference as well. But I cannot complain. I am uh, doing quite well on this dreary Chicago weather that we have out here. So the good old Midwest uh, is doing what it does best around the fall time. And I know our few guests are also from the Midwest as well. They can chime in on the lovely weather we're having around these t- around these parts. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's uh, I'm proud to say we're sunny and 77 degrees in New Jersey today. Feels like a nice, warm summer day. I don't know where it comes from in the middle of, excuse me, the end of October, but I'll take it every day, which means we'll probably have snow by like Thursday or something. But anyway, probably. Although I didn't hear that this year they said that it was going to be the warmest, um, it was going to be probably the warmest winter that we have so far. So I don't know how true that is, but we'll we'll find right, out. For Chicago, they told us we we're going to have the worst snow, more snow this year than any other time. I mean, so we'll, we'll, you, we'll, you're, we'll see. you're in Jersey, so yeah, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on, our guest today uh, come from Shield Cyber. These guys uh, were sponsors of TechCon Unplugged and and are supporters of the show, and we appreciate them. I'd like to welcome. Uh, Teddy Guzak, he is the co-founder and CEO of the company, and Dylan Hutchison, who is the head of channel. Again, as I said, they're both from Shield Cyber. Guys, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever wherever everyone is and listening to this. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Welcome, uh, good welcome, morning welcome. To you. Um, guys, for um, and you can start in any order you want, but just give us a little background on, on yourselves first and how you came uh, to form Shield Cyber. Sure. Yeah, I'll go ahead and kick us off. Uh, so yeah, Teddy Guzik, uh, background is in penetration testing, um, enterprise penetration testing specifically. Uh, we started off my career working for a large consulting firm up in uh, Paco's neck of the woods in uh, in Chicago. Spent about five years there working in uh, and then leading a, a pen test lab there. I was uh, fortunate enough to be able to travel the world, do pen tests for companies um, all over the place, seeing all sorts of unique networks and um, different types of setups and things like that. Um, and then right before the pandemic, moved back to Indianapolis, where I grew up, and uh, started a pen testing company, a pen testing service provider here. Um, that company is still very much well and alive. Um, our focuses have shifted to the Shield Cyber side of things, but that pen testing company helps inform a lot of what we do here at Shield Cyber. Um, but yeah, we uh, Shield Cyber been around for a couple of years now, um, really focusing on the channel now. Uh, but yeah, that's that's how we got here. Um, and then I'll kick it over to Dylan now. Hey guys, yeah. Again, thanks for thanks for having us on. Uh, I've always been a fan of the show. Um, Dylan Hutchison with with Shield Cyber. Um, I always like to say I was kind of born into cybersecurity. Spent much of my childhood running around hospitals and data centers with my dad. He's he's been a CISO my entire life. Um, and then with my mom working in in compliance in the manufacturing industry. So I saw the very boring side of security with a lot of report writing and uh, learned very quickly that I was like I want to be on on the business side and uh, and on the sales side. Um, so previous to uh, starting at Shield, I spent a little over five years at a uh, national MSSP. And uh, when I got hooked up with Teddy and Michael, they were solving a really cool challenge in the vulnerability management space. And uh, it was a no brainer for me to jump on. Great. You guys, are, it sounds like you're both, uh, and I, I use this term loosely, but born nerds. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I, you know, my kids call me, you know, they call every every event we do or we go to or everything we do, they call it NerdCon. You know, yep. they, think, they have this vision of us, you know, all just being a bunch of, I, I, I don't know, I guess, pocket square guys or, you know, what do you call it? Pocket protectors, I'm sorry. Not too far off. 
Yeah, so but, it's, but it's, it's, it's funny you say that though, real quick, because uh, so my fiance always has felt that in that same realm, like it's a bunch of nerds getting together or whatever. So her first con, her full first conference that she went with me that we traveled to was Pax Eight Beyond, and so she'd never been to a Rob Ray party. So when it was the end bar and everything, I mean, she had so much fun. She was, oh yeah, she had so much fun then, and she was just like, how, what what <laughs> like this is an actual thing and then i remember that actually the year before we went to a cronus's uh cyber summit and that night she's like what like this is actually a lot of fun that's when we were hanging out with you rick um and we had a good time uh, over there so yeah so she's now realized that you know it's not just pocket squares and whatever and we're not just right, sitting exactly. down, you know doing hackathons or like we're actually you know we know how to have fun too as well so yeah, oh it's no. just funny yeah, my my family is the, the exact same way. They've heard my calls for the past several years. They've been like, you know, you guys are just nerding out about tech and you guys have so much fun with it. My girlfriend's also gotten exposed to the conference circuit. And, you know, some of these calls, you know, the monthly calls with the tech digit degenerates and, and that group. And she was like, what even is your your job in cyber? I was like, I really just go out and make friends professionally. That's that's what I like <laughs> to say that my job is um no it's it's been the best industry to get involved with um and paco you're exactly right like it's it's just a lot of fun people people look at it like oh it's just tech it's boring it's like nah. when you when you get involved with the people in the space it's it's the best yeah yeah to, to tag on that so uh, my my background is is in traditionally enterprise you know lar large organizations dylan and i have been talking about what what we've been building at, at shield for a couple of years now um and he had kind of mentioned, you know, this is what the channel is like. This is this is what, you know, what you can expect, what you should, why you guys should go here and check it out and um, finally listen to him. And so we've really been involved in the channel for about six months now. Um, and it has been it has truly been unique and it's been fantastic. Like the, the people that we've made that we made friends with that we have just become close with advisors, things like that, that have jumped on in such a short amount of time since we've been involved has been really tremendous. Um, it's allowed us to, to learn so much and um, really get ingrained in a group that's that's been very welcoming. Uh, traditionally, you know, from an enterprise security perspective, I wouldn't say it's a super <laughs> welcoming space. Um, everyone needs to be the smartest guy in the room. Everyone needs to be the like is, is getting super technical about any claims or any things that you're making and stuff like that. And it's, it's not about like very little of that goes to like bettering the community and things like that. It's all about who's the smartest person and stuff like that. So it's been a, a great uh, experience so far and we're really looking forward to the, the upcoming years. I'll say this to you, Teddy. Welcome to the other side. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. We're the other side. Not your traditional tech, I guess you would say, yeah. right? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we, we, you know, it was great. Like at TechCon, it was great meeting you guys. I know you guys had a lot of fun. We had, we enjoyed having you. Um, and I know you, you I, I just remember specifically having some conversations, particularly with you, Dylan, and you guys are enjoying yourself. And, and, that's the way we are, and and that that's what makes this great. So, uh, again, you know, I want to thank you for you guys for doing that. But uh, let's talk a little bit now about Shield and what you guys do. And you know, as we talk about it on this show, we like to say we like to preference that for MSPs, we want to know how we can save time, improve our business process, save money if possible. But tell us what Shield does and how that helps us in those, in those core fundamentals we're looking at. Sure. Yeah. So, so shield is, is an identity based vulnerability management platform, um, built from the, the, from the beginning at its, uh, the most technical way to find security vulnerabilities. The problem that we're solving is as pen testers, as running vulnerability management programs, we have noticed that, you know, we go through and we find, we do pen tests, we'll run a vulnerability scan and the way that we gain total access to, to environments is not necessarily through those vulnerabilities. The problem is we're looking at like a huge vulnerability overload right now where people, you know, people seem to think that like, how am I supposed to, you know, correct and fix all these vulnerabilities? Like I'm never able to stop all these, these findings from, um, or these vulnerabilities from continuing to show up in an environment. What we're, we're bringing a new perspective in terms of 
the way that we describe it is we're showing you what actually matters in an environment um, and how attackers are actually going through and and pivoting through environments, gaining access. Uh, most vulnerabilities that come out actually don't have exploits to them. So like we want to help organizations prioritize, save time in that regard. Um, but then also there's a lot more that goes into uh, the way an attacker gets into an environment um, past that initial access vector. There's a huge misconception that vulnerability management is just patch management and it's not right. There's a lot of misconfigurations. There are um, misconfigurations and identities and things like that. And that's kind of where we get into what our specialty is. Michael, my, uh, our co-founder is, is a very deep security researcher in, in identity security in Azure and, and um, uh, Active Directory. So um, it's, it's one of those things. It's like, how do you bring all those things together at its very core and, and re, rethink the way that people look at vulnerability management uh, as a whole. So um, yeah, to kind of sum that up, identity-based vulnerability management, um, we look for things that truly matter. We try to save time, save MSPs time by helping them prioritize things that they should be fixing and not spending time or money trying to fix things that don't necessarily matter because the truth is, is in the way that most large enterprises are approaching this is that we're never gonna fix everything is how do we make sure that we're prioritizing the things that actually matter. Um, so that's Dylan, what else, what am I missing in that? No, no, you really hit the nail on the head with we're, we're trying to help and enable MSPs to really mature their existing vulnerability management practice or, you know, starting from scratch, um, really working towards the right ways um, and not, you know, just looking at the endless list of, uh, of CVEs. Yeah, the other, actually, the other thing I want to add to that as well is one thing that we've been discussing with, with some of our, our partners is that you know, their big argument back is like, I don't want to do vulnerability management because then that's, you know, a lot of my customers, A, think we're already doing this, B, think that, you know, that that the MSP should just automatically know all of these things and be fixing them as it is. Our whole idea behind this is, is guilt-free vulnerability management, right? Like this is, we're helping arm the MSP to have the, the understanding of these environments, of these vulnerabilities that are in an environment rather than operating at a, you know, an assumption that maybe they may know all these things, but they may not as well. Um, and one thing that comes up a lot is, you know, organizations want pen tests and those pen tests lead to the MSP getting some slaps on the wrists and things like that, where a company comes in and finds all sorts of these problems. Well, getting an MSP ahead of that and saying, oh yeah, we knew about those things. That's not an actual issue. We have this mitigating control in place. And just helping them arm them to have good conversations with their clients and healthy conversations about risk, uh, the technical risk in their client's environment. I'm going to steal Paco's uh, wording here, but there's a lot of things to unpack. That's Paco always says that, but there's a lot of things to unpack with what you said. And I had a conversation with you guys, pr you know, prior to, pr to the show and you educated me on some things that I thought I knew, but you show me a different, you know, you gave me a different perspective, right? particularly when you do vulnerability management or what you think is vulnerability management, what you normally get is a lot of was it CVs, right? Mm -hmm. So you yep. get that long list and you think, okay, I have to patch these things. You don't think about the fact that, hey, yeah, there's some misconfigurations, but something you said, Teddy, that you said it again today, but it stood out in my mind the first time you said it. Sometimes these things don't lead anywhere, right? Oh. Sometimes the, these, these vulnerabilities don't necessarily lead anywhere. So you can be chasing your tail for something you don't necessarily have to. Now that's us getting the, getting the, running the scan from whoever we use, right? And you get the, the list and then you say, oh, I got to patch all of these things or fix all of these things. And, and, you know, that big time saver and that big, you know, um, taking away from the stress and the, 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 the just, the, you know, just the stress in the, the drive of it all is yeah. some things don't necessarily need to be addressed or are mm -hmm. not necessarily a priority. And I think that's important because, you know, again, as we move into, into this part of it, again, we're talking about doing things in, in, in clumps and you get to that vulnerability management portion of it. And then you're like, Oh God, isn't he now here's 75 things I got to fix. How the hell am I going to do that? Yeah. So, you know, it's it just, you know, it helps to understand that all of them are not necessarily important or a priority. Yep. And, and and you guys help, you know, I, it's the first time I'd heard that. 
and then you guys help to decipher what is important and yep. what isn't important. And, and to tag on top of that, like it's, it's, you know, more than just vulnerabilities, right? Like it's like everywhere in life, right? Information overload is not necessarily a good thing. You don't want to arm yourself. Obviously it's good to get all the information that you have and then make a decision accordingly. But like, think about when your to-do list gets too long and all of a sudden you're just too overwhelmed to even do anything, right? It happens to me all the time. And you talk about like, how can I, how can I narrow these things down to the main things that matter um, to my business, to my life, to what I need to accomplish by the end of this week. And that's, I think that's kind of what we wanted to, to translate into this is that um, exactly to your point, too much information, just uh, it requires, it, it just blocks up stuff from getting done. And mm -hmm. if you're giving them, you know, if 10% of the things that you're looking at bef from before that need to be fixed, you're going to save yourself a lot of time and a lot of money. And then those other things are what we call cleanup items. And they're things that when you get done, when you have the time or, you know, we don't have any tickets right now, or we're not getting a lot of calls, then, okay, let's go through and let's fix some of those items. Um, and they're always going to be there. So, um, yeah. And, and just providing context around those, those vulnerabilities, because in certain environments, they matter in certain vi environments, they don't. So, um, but yeah, no, that's a, that's a, I, I like that your takeaway from that. Cause that's really what we're trying to do is, is provide a lot of awareness around what vulnerability management truly is and how those programs should be run as opposed to just a tool that finds a ton of things that just says, oh, by the way, here's all these missing patches, you should fix them. Right. Now, Paco, I know you and I have had conversations back and forth about this and it, it comes, you know, we, we talk about all the time about what to add to what we're doing and when to add it. And I know vulnerability management has been one of those conversations we've had recently. So, you know, you, you can elaborate a little bit on that and, and your thoughts on, on where we're going with that now. So if I think I recall some of our conversations where, you know, <laughs> yes, we talk about so many things. <laughs> no, no, well, I, I just want to go, you know, we, I had, I just, I literally just had a conversation about this on a webinar that I was moderating earlier this week where, you know, we go through this, this progress as MSPs on the shiny object syndrome, right. And not understanding what you're really looking for. Right. And so, you know, sometimes we'll hear like, hey, you know, there's this new product uh, um, that came out and you should buy it. And then because that's what the trend is going for right now. Right. And then so like, you know, vulnerability management, that is a, a, a big topic as of today. And what people don't really know is that they're going to fly toward the one that has the best marketing, which is the wrong answer. Um, you know, we know a couple companies that we have looked at in the past where it was all nice and simplified. But when we went down through the demos, it was like, this is not what, what, you're, what you advertised on. Right. right. And then you a got guys, B. right. And then you got guys like Shield Cyber that are saying, look, yeah, that's all nice. But there's some fundamental foundational things you need to understand first before that we can go ahead and actually take on and show you what true vulnerability management means. This is what we're trying to do. This is the education of the space. And usually it does take an emerging vendor to do that because you are much more uh, uh, flexible to be able to, hey, look, this is our strategy. This is how we're gonna get the long game. We're not here for the width, we're here for the depth. And that's where a lot of vendors, a lot of partners and companies thrive and they succeed because they understand what they're trying to do. I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, uh, and it's a separate uh, separate industry, but uh, QBRs, right? Qu trying to do a TBR, QBR, however, whatever you call your BRs, um, you know, trying to really figure out, all right, well, I'm just going to meet with my client and talk and figure it out and, you know, show them the nice little reports that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. And we'll move on. And here comes, you know, Lifecycle Insights, Marnie uh, and, and her team really writing into the education piece first. They were the smaller, smaller uh, guys, uh, sm smaller guys and gals in the beginning, but they grew into such a big. Just pillar, in my opinion, of the community Most definitely. to educate on what they talked about QBR. And it's companies like Shield Cyber that are trying to get into the space 
begin with the education part of it. And that's how you see those businesses succeed. So what do I mean by all this? And going back to like our conversation in the stack is that you just can't follow what you see. You have to do the work. You have to investigate. And, you know, quite frankly, do you have the resources and 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 the uh, and I mean time resources to invest in that piece of technology that you're trying to implement? I know that we've had many topics and many conversations where you know some of us will buy things and then we're paying for months of them and we haven't used them, and so then it's the perceived value that drops from that, and then you separate, and then it's like, well, if I had the time, it would have been a better experience. So. That's why it's important to have conversations and say, look, I definitely want to take a look at this. I just don't have the time right now. But when you have a business and a par uh, emerging vendor or just a vendor that leads with education, they understand that because when you're ready, they know you're going to come to them and, and pull in anyway. So that's my feedback on that, on the, the shiny object syndrome slash, <laughs> you know you know, all of the things that become trending, whether it's vulnerability management, whether it's uh, security awareness training, I forgot what the, the new thing now is. Um, I can't recall, but there's like a new thing now that everyone's- All of the DRs, about. MDR, XDR, EDR. Yeah, they say it's whatever XDR. acronym of the week. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. acronym of the week, and, exactly. And trying to drive in there, but you know, but driving back to Shield Cyber and, and kind of giving back to, you know, obviously we want to make sure the spotlight is really more for you all is that, you know, you have all are talking about how the educational pieces and how you've helped Rick on, on improving services, but how have you, you know, every MSP always has the same question. How are you going to save me time? How are you going to save me money? How do you usually answer those questions when they're looking at uh, Shield Cyber for their, uh, their portfolio to add to provide to their clients? Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, from, from a time perspective, it's kind of what we drove into before it's, we're going to find vulnerabilities. I mean, there's, there's the, there's the quick, save time that the daily the weekly but then there's also the big the big save time which is the if a breach happens or something like that or helping to to prevent a breach from happening sometime in the future um but like the day-to-day -day, you're talking about um you know finding and, and pointing out the, the misconfigurations and the patches and the identities that that are misconfigured that need to be fixed um so fixing the ones that actually matter so the prioritization piece there and then from a long term down the line, a lot of the feedback that I've gotten and, and I'm I'm fairly new to the MSP space specifically. Right. That's Dylan is my is my uh, my right hand man on all of that stuff because he's, he's teaching me. And then but a really big thing that we're doing is, is learning from from all of you. And that's why we're spending so much time at these conferences, talking to people and, and with our partners, really trying to understand what it is that their big problems are. But that our understanding is that. When a when a breach when a breach happens, an MSP actually is it's not a good thing for MSP. They end up losing a lot of time um, and a lot of money on that, depending on how their contracts are structured. And you know, potentially clients, there's the um, there's also the reputational risk there. Um, so by prioritizing and explaining and showing people that these are the things that matter and these are the things that you should be fixing it's going to help them in the long run with all of those things. Um, and I say that wholeheartedly just as our background, as, as pen testers, as hackers, that is what I spent the first decade of my career doing. So I know how bad guys are getting in. We have a team that still informs us on all of that stuff. Our, our sister company, Hoplite Consulting. So like we, we have all of these, um, these resources that are giving us that information that we, that, arms us to be experts in that space, right? We didn't just find a, a hot a hot topic and decide we're going to create a product out of that because, you know, we can throw together some open source tools and pull it all together. It's we actually have the expertise in the space. Um, in terms of the this the the money piece, um, I, I think it's a really a good opportunity for for MSPs to to increase revenue because they're able to um, talk to their client in a transparent way. We're trying to help enable them to talk to their clients in a transparent way to say that we're adding these additional security tools to our stack, right? This is, this is a, a new tool. It's not something that's been out there. This is something that can help inform us and make better decisions to grow your business and to be able to be more secure and be more confident in what we're doing. Um, by, by then, by allowing the, the client access to those reports, to those dashboards, they can see all the time how well the MSP is doing. Is there things that they need to be concerned about? Um, but we really want to instill a, an idea of transparency between the MSP and the end customer, because um, ultimately that's what's that's how everyone's going to win. That's that's how we view um, good business. So, 
Dale, what did I miss there? Anything? No, no, you hit it again. Um, really driving that, you know, I always come back to that, that enterprise level security back down to the MS, back down to the SMB through the MSP channel. Dylan, now you're the, you're the guy as the head of channel, you're the guy that's going to be the, the liaison between the company and the MSPs. That's so right. tell us more about the, about the, I know you guys are developing a partner program. Tell us a little bit about that and how that works. Yeah, most definitely. So as Teddy alluded to, you know, while our backgrounds in security relatively new to the MSP channel. So one of the big things that we're doing is that we've been learning from our early design partners, um, you know, hearing that feedback of, you know, hey, me as an MSP, these are the, the you know, different automations or scalability, you know, type functions in this platform that we'd like to see. So that's where it really lives on the product side, just listening to our partners. The other thing is we're 100 percent channel We're we're you know avoiding the channel conflict we don't go after direct customers in fact one of our, our long-term projects is being able to drive more business to our partners as a partner program um our whole goal is to help msps find more mature customers um we spend a lot of time in education so starting with that why vulnerability management why is this important and then more importantly how do you then scale this into your business with you know kind of the tech drag aspect of it hey Let's start with vulnerability management, get into that, you know, DR acronym of the week and then move down the line to more mature services. Um, our whole thing is trying to build a holistic cybersecurity program wrapped around what actually matters in the identity world. Okay. Now, <clears throat> for partners that, you know, I know we're, we're getting closer to the end here, but yeah. for someone interested, if, if I wanted to become a, you know, a part, is there a specific now MSP partner program? Yes, most definitely. Yeah. So our, our MSP partner program is is launched. Um, we, we try to be as flexible as possible. So we do not have minimum requirements in terms of, you know, revenue or, or launching this out to your customer base. No long term commitments. Paco, like you talked about earlier, you know, a lot of MSPs go out and they buy a bunch of tools that they don't really know how to use yet. And they have it integrated into their their standard operating procedures. We want to avoid that at, at all cost. Um, we want to be there as you need us, and then really propel your business forward. Um, so we have we have you know no minimums. Um, we want to be with you with the the entire way through the journey. Now, as far as for the partner program and someone signing in, how long does it take from the moment they see a demo and prospect to them hitting the ground running? How long is that uh, duration for them to be a full fledged partner to start providing this into their portfolio? Most definitely. On average, we see the partners almost self-sufficient within that first 30 to, you know, almost 45 days. We do have some partners that are, you know, hey, I want you to really hold my hand through that, you know, 90 day mark. We've got some partners that the moment they sign on, they're like, hey, give me the deployment instructions and I'm off to the races. Um, so it's really all about the, you know, maturity and familiarity with vulnerability management from the partner. But we're there every step of the way. We've got an onboarding flow that's like really that, that true crawl, walk, run. Um, of, hey, we'll, we'll work with your techs on how to deploy this. We'll work with them on how to prioritize the different assets with your sales team. We'll get you this, the, the sell sheets, the white labeled sell sheets um, to go out. We've got a message map of, hey, how do you even introduce vulnerability management to your customers? It's a new concept for most. Um, so we'll give them you know, every tool and resource that they need to really educate their customers. Um, going back to that, we're not you know, leading with that, that FUD marketing, the fear, uncertainty and doubt. We want to really be with them to educate their customers of, hey, this is why this is important to your organization and how we're really going to enhance your security operations through vulnerability management. Cool. Now, do you guys offer, I know, Teddy, I know this is your background, but do you guys offer pen testing as well, or is that a separate? We do not. No, no. So, so Shield Cyber is, is not, does not do any services of that nature. Um, we're well connected to, um, penetration testing companies that the one I alluded to earlier is a, is a very close, they sit across the hall from us. Um, and, uh, but then, but we also have, we have service providers that are our partners that we, that we're working with on this, that those are truly the, the people that we're going to, to, to bring them that the penetration testing business, um, that the, the, the pen testing company Hoplite is, uh, primarily works more in the enterprise. So, um, the specialty is not with the, um, with the channel. So we, the MSSPs and the, um, you know, other sorts of smaller service providers that, that provide those types of services that are our partners, we push them that business from that regard. Okay. 
Now, I, I asked that question for two reasons, and I wasn't sure if you guys did the pen testing part of this, but I also asked, and, uh, and I'm guessing I'm going to push this out, and this was, again, something you educated me on, and I think is important for the audience to understand the, you know, because pen testing gets wrapped up with vulnerability management all the time, right? As if it's one thing or, you know, step one leads to step two. Now, just give us, you know, um, I guess I don't know how, if it's a quick synopsis of of what that difference is and is it is one necessary for the other? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked that question, Rick. That, this is actually the 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 pilgrimage that we're on and the messaging that I'm trying to get across is what the difference is there. People a lot of times do use it synonymously. Um, so penetration testing would fall under a vulnerability management program as a whole from a, like a process perspective. If you have a vulnerability management process, part of that is gonna be how often you're getting a pen test done. Um, and inside that vulnerability management process as well will be your patch, your patching process, your you know secure configuration management, your asset management, those all kind of fall under that vulnerability management uh, program as a whole. Um, the way that we view Shield Cyber, so being more than just a, a, a vulnerability scanner, if you will, right? We add the identity piece, we find, more uh the misconfigurations that that other scanners necessarily don't because they're not security first they're probably built by a product manager not by someone who actually hacks companies so um the idea behind it is think about like in college right uh you study you, you study for tests you go to class you take quizzes you do your homework all those things and then you have a test at the end of the year a final right um, you wouldn't just go into that final and expect to do well. Well, that's the same thing as like a pen test. So think about vulnerability management, your vulnerability management program as taking your test, doing your homework, showing up the class, staying up to date, doing the readings. That's what Shield does for you. And then when you come in to do that pen test once a year at the end of each year or whatever it may be, you're prepared for that, right? So you know, you get those results back. And a lot of times it should be done by an independent third party. Independent third party comes in, they find it, and then you're aware of what they're gonna find based on what we have armed Shield to be able to look for. So um, that's how we view it. Um, and it's they go very well in tandem with each other. It's not one replaces the other, but it's a part of a whole program. And they, they're they not synonymous, for sure not. Great. and I. I, I ask that question because you you gave it to me and it was actually helped me to explain it to a client who saw these you know these questions during an audit that he had to do for a bank yep. and he was asking me and i was like i'm so glad i talked to these guys before <laughs> yeah. i talked to you because I, I was able to answer it intelligently and i just think it's something you know and I, I i wanted you to say it again here for our audience because again i was under the impression it was all you know basically the sa same thing because a lot of companies you see will say they do both, you know, they're this and this. And so you think they're synonymous with each other and your way of explaining it, particularly with, you know, you, you practice, you learn, you study, you study, you study, you study, you, you, you take quizzes, 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 and then the pen test is the big test. You know, the pen test is the, the final exam basically, yep. or the midterm, whatever you want to call it to tell you, <clears throat> you know, how you've done along the way. I think it's a great way to explain it. And I use that example, <laughs> explaining it to the client, <laughs> it, it it helped me a lot. And I think it was, it, you know, just important for the audience to hear and basically get that understanding here. Now, um, we are close and uh, approaching the end of here. So uh, I want to give you guys, if you know, I, I know Paco and I talked a little, maybe I talked a lot, but uh, is there anything you think um, we didn't touch on that you think is important for the audience to know about, you know, about pen testing, vulnerability management or shield cyber in general? Uh, I think I think the main thing is that I want to get across my message. Want, I want to be someone that and the, the, the team at Shield, we want to be someone that the whole channel feels like they can come to 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 ask any of those questions. Right. If you're an MSP, I don't care if you're a customer or not. If you have a question about your, one of your clients getting pen tested, if you have a question about what tools you should be having into your security stack as a whole, just being security practitioners to begin with, we're trying to help arm the whole channel for that. For, for those types of questions and those types of um, 
you know, issues that may come ar- around. So that's one thing is that, you know, anyone, anyone that has any questions, any of your listeners that want to, you know, chat about any of these things, how always happy to talk about it, even from a completely unbiased perspective. Dale, what else? Anything, anything we didn't touch on from your world? No, no, that's perfect. Um, we do have a special offer for the the listeners. Um, anybody that wants to, to jump on um, and join the partner program, if you mention MSP Unplugged or, you know, say you heard from us from, from Rick or Paco, we are, we are offering three months for free. Um, so, you know, come in, test it in the client environment, free of charge. Oh, cool. Now, um, before we wrap up, if, how does uh, everyone get in touch with you guys? Is it um, website, LinkedIn? I, I always like to tell people that I'm a little bit of everywhere, whether it's, you know, hit me up on, on Teams, email, LinkedIn, Discord, message in a bottle. Um, you can find me <laughs> on, at, you know, as, as Dylan Hutchison on, on all major platforms or, you know, hit me up at Dylan at shieldcyber.io. Um, more than happy to, to connect with everybody. Yeah, our emails are just first name and then at shieldcyber.io. So if you want to get a hold of, of, of me, of Dylan, of Michael, co-founder, of Sam, our, our marketing, like any of them, we're, we're happy to, to chat. Cool. Paco, any, any last words before we sign off here? No, I just uh, will make sure all that information is in the show notes for everyone to have when the episode is published. Also, I would implore everyone to definitely just at least take a look um, and – being that they're from the Midwest, they got a special place in my heart. So you better give them, show them some love. So that's all uh, <laughs> I got to say for all that. Cool, cool. Awesome. We appreciate hey, it. Guys. Thank you guys so much for having us. Yeah, thank you very thank much. You for, thank you for coming. Um, for our latest listening, I said, excuse me, listening audience out there, we invite you to tune in every Tuesday and Thursday. You can watch the video podcast on youtube.com forward slash MSP Unplug. Do us a favor because it is important. Like, subscribe, hit that notification button to be notified whenever a new episode is available. You can also take us at a go. We're on your favorite podcast apps. That's Amazon Music, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. That's the name of a few. More importantly, if you love to hear what we've, we're giving out here, please give us a review. You, um, do that on your podcast app as well. For the guys here, we want to thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time on MSP Unplugged.